Today I've got a little bit of an inspirational style book slash video and today I got Jonathan Livingston Siegel The Complete Edition by Richard Bach and well let's get right into it. So the book itself is pretty much about the seagull who doesn't like the way seagulls live. The seagulls currently are just squabbling for food and not using their inherent ability to be free and to fly and they're not utilizing that. So, so to speak, Jonathan Livingston Siegel goes against the gulls and he learns how to fly. He becomes an outcast and he doesn't understand why. Why doesn't the other gulls understand the beauty, the freedom of flight? Then he's transported into what I would like to call gull heaven or a place where enlightened gulls who have, who know about the lovely ability to fly and the love for flight and there he learns to fly to another level. He sees that the only limitations that he has set upon himself is his body that he thinks has these limitations. And then he comes back to the normal world to try to enlighten and teach goals how that flight about flight, freedom, and finding their true identity. And that is actually pretty much the three parts of the story, that's it. But I would like to talk about what each thing I think symbolizes. The first part where Jonathan is an outcast and he is a flight obsessed with flight. I would like to say that's like the most um, basic thing about an entrepreneur or a genius who later on becomes one of the top people in the world. People think that you're crazy. People think you're obsessed, that you're weird, that you focus on the wrong things. You're prioritizing wrong. Prioritizing wrong. How many times have I heard that sentence? Anyway, that's pretty much what he's experiencing. A young genius' start on his path. Then he becomes an outcast. He, he is, when he becomes an outcast, he's basically saying that I accept myself and I'm not going to just go with the crowd go with the flow, I'm gonna go against the crowd and become revolutionary. And he does, and he, and he becomes, he does really well, and he's starting to become a really smart and really good flying goal. And I think this symbolizes perhaps the entrepreneur or the person's dream slowly coming true, even though no one really thinks of it as a big deal yet. Then, the point where he goes up to Gull Heaven to meet the other enlightened goals, I think, is where he, like, succeeds, you know? Like, Steve Jobs succeeded, and Bill Gates succeeded, Thomas Edison succeeded after a lot of trial and error, and that's where they kind of go into a new level of thought. They realize that they have no limitations, first of all, and second of all, they see people like them around them because the people at the top are people like them fast-thinking, contradictory, revolutionary entrepreneurs or free thinkers. And I think that's pretty awesome. And I think, and at that point, you reach a new level where you realize that the only limitations that exist are the limitations that you put upon yourself. And this is actually, I'm talking from like actual experience because like when I was like 12, like two years ago, three years ago, I would have said, Christopher Paolini wrote a book when he was published his book, Aragon, when he was 17 years old. And I would look at that and say, hey, Christopher Paolini is a genius. I can't do that. I'm not some genius. I'm, I like writing, but I can't write more than 7,000 words. It, I mean, a novel, it's, it's incredible. It's ridiculous at that age. And then I kind of realized that, hey, if I try, couldn't I do it? And I did it! I, I'm right now, the book's at 76,000 words, 75,000 words, somewhere around there. It's a novel, and I'm editing it, and it's reaching the point where I'm wishing I could publish it. Or I'm gonna try to publish it. And that just shows how... The limitations where you say, eh, that's not possible. I'm not like that. I'm not a genius. Shut up. There's no such thing as genius. The only th thing that exists is the person who gives up before trying, and the person who doesn't give up even when trying. And I think that any person who succeeds in this world is the latter. And it's very rare. Like it takes grit. It takes it takes a part to pull through because the middle bit and the start bit, it's gonna be 
freaking hard. I know that. I'm in the middle of it right now and it's hard because I need to deal with school, I need to deal with writing, I need to... I want to let my dream run free at the same time I do have my responsibilities as a student. And people think I'm crazy. A lot of my friends think, dude, you're obsessed with your book. Like, dude, you're focusing on your book instead of the math test that's a week away. Dude, you're crazy. <laughs> why are you Why are you wasting your life on making a book? And I'm like, yeah, you might think that. That's cool. I mean, you're not me. But the way that I see it is that the, the differentiation between those who succeed and those who don't is the fact that you're trying and you're not giving up and other people meanwhile give up before even trying like I just said and that's that's just me talking from personal experience although I haven't succeeded yet hopefully I do but yeah that's what I think and the really the line that I really like from this book was that one line that your only limitations are the ones you put on yourself like I've already like talked about how that really relates to my own personal experience but I just think that it makes so much sense. I can't write a book, I can't write a novel, did that, done that, over that, that's in the past. I can't debate and win, debated and won, done that, after that. I can't get a thousand subscribers on YouTube, done that in the past. It's all possible if you just think of it as possible and just never stop trying. Success, I believe, is just Failing over and over again, but having positive failure and not giving up ever. And I know this is like, oh, it's corny and cheesy and blah, 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 blah. it's not, it's not actually true. No, no, it's true. I know because I kind of did it. But by that, I mean that not giving up is not the really cliche thing that you think to be. Like, you say not giving up and say, oh, I won't give up on the test that I have tomorrow. I won't give up on on finishing this thing tomorrow. I won't give up on my homework. I won't give up on my uh, my uh, MVP++ rank in a game. I, I don't give up on a, a Grandmaster rank in a game. Like, it's not about giving up on a particular occasion. It's about not giving up ever. Now this might be hard, of course you're gonna give up sometimes, but if it's your dream and you found something that you really like, then you shouldn't give up ever. Whether it's like video games, like you become a pro Overwatch player, or or you're a writer like me and you're trying to finish your first book at, at the perfect level, or you're a, 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 a startup businessman, who business person, woman, whatever, who is starting up his business and things aren't going that well, just don't stop. And if you don't stop, well, you know, if you swing a bat a thousand times to try to hit a mosquito, one of the thousand times you're gonna get it. And I think that's really what the seagull story is also trying to tell us. And the seagull also focuses on the fact that gulls are meant to be free and they have wings so that they can fly. I think it's the same thing. We have our minds and we have our intellect and we have the ability to learn because within us resides the natural possibility to succeed and become great and accomplish the highest versions of ourselves. And the thing is, we think, oh, Bill Gates, he's far, far away. Um, Rick Riordan, J.K. Rowling, far away. But you gotta remember, they're just people. And that's, I guess, the first step to realizing that they're just being them, but not giving up. And I think that's another thing that the seagull story really emphasizes that I can think about simplistically. And yeah, that's that's just something that I want to get out there. It's just it's just a beautiful story. It's very well written, the visual imagery is great, and the actual technique of the writing is great. I see that. But also it really I guess it had a bigger impact on me because it didn't just feel like the corny typical motivational book. Because for me, it felt like a recognition of something that I've already been doing for the past year. It felt like an assurance that, hey, what you're doing is right, and eventually, you're gonna reach your goal. And that's the kind of vibe that I got from it. Of course, not everyone's gonna be like that, but if, you, if you're in, a bit, in the middle of what you believe to be one in a lifetime project, finish it. Even if, you, even if it takes you 10 years, 
finish it and see what happens. And if you haven't found anything, well, just try to look within your- I know that's super vague, you, you go to college and oh, look within yourself to find your true potential, like, really dude? Yeah, gee, thanks, I, I really needed that advice. But like, seriously, it's- I know it feels empty when you hear it, but I really, really mean it when you should- when I'm saying that you should try to look within yourself and try to find something that you really, really like, that you're really in tune with. And you try to find the real you, or the you that you feel the most comfortable with. And that's, I think, the entire moral or message of this book. It's that you find yourself, you, within you, just by just being you, you have the potential to be great. And the only limits that you think you have are the ones that you place upon yourself using your mind. It's a nice message. And I want to end it off with just saying, don't give up. Try again and again. I know this sounds cheesy, but try to accomplish your dreams. And one day, maybe we can go up to gull heaven and meet people just like us. People who've gone through this ridiculously annoying process and found the best versions of themselves. Or we're constantly improving, but still. Anyways, that's pretty much it. A fun fact, uh, the part where Jonathan kind of comes down to teach the other gulls. I found that really similar to Jesus teaching his disciples and coming back to life and stuff. But you know, that's, that's just a little little fun fact, not really connected to my my perception of the story. But yeah, and like always, your plot cluster are in the plot cluster. Yeah, just think about the things I said, and yeah, live your life the way you want. Have a great day.